Hi everyone, um, I'm just going to show you how I created um, this look on this book cover. Um, I just used some homemade sprays and some distress inks and I will get cracking and show you how I've done it. So I've got some, just this is copy paper here which has been tea dyed or coffee dyed, I can't remember which one. I've cut out my cardstock from my um, covers because um, this was just a little teeny tiny one and then I made, well actually this is the teeny tiny one. Um, so I'm just going to run shove this up. it as much as possible without tearing it. And then just lay it down like so. Obviously if you're using bigger covers you need bigger paper. Uh, this is just some cereal box. So I'm just going to use some tacky glue here and hopefully it's going to come out. <coughs> okay, it doesn't want to play. So I'm actually putting a fair bit <coughs> on here because I want it to smudge around once I stick it down. So there's a fair bit on there. So I'm just going to kind of centre it on there. And just move it around a little bit so that it goes everywhere. And it will kind of pop out. The glue will pop out the sides but that doesn't matter. Then do the same with your bigger pieces. Excuse me, I keep sniffing. I've got <coughs> really bad um, summer allergies. It's driving me insane. Okay, and then I'm just going to leave a small gap. Um, I'll just move that around too. So you've got a small gap, like so. Same on this piece. I'm just going to turn that round and I'll just put that on there, leaving roughly the same size gap. I'm going to use my scissors and just cut this down a little bit shorter. I do normally let this sit a little bit, but obviously I haven't got the time to do that. And just cut into the corners. I just do it like so because sometimes when I mitre the whole corner off I end up with a little gap in here sometimes I'm not obviously I'm clearly not doing it properly <laughs> this way is much better so now we've got that like so and then I'm just going to put some glue on here and just fold that over and press it down and do the other side. My glue doesn't want to play today. And do the same that side. I think I'm running a little bit low on this as well. I've got a new one. I'm just going to stick a pin in here. habit of leaving the lids off. So just fold that over and press it down. And again <coughs> on this side. I'm hoping to get this done in like 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So I can upload straight from my phone. If not, when I put my videos on to Movie Maker, they come out they come out upside down for some reason. 
I don't know what that's all about. I think it's because my I've got my camera um, on reverse. Okay, so we're now left with this, and you can see all the wrinkledy bits. So now I'm just going to use this craft mat here. Actually, it's a thicker heat mat thing. Anyway, right, I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to go for this brown look again. So I'm just going to move these out of the way because I'm terrible for spraying. So on the last time I used yellow, I used red, and I used this blue, and this blue's got a little bit of black in it as well, and it's got some perfect pearls in it for a little bit of shimmer. So I'm just going to give them a quick shake. And I use the um, a heat tool to, to dry in between. So I'm going to start off with yellow and you will also need some kitchen paper just to dab and then wipe that away so it doesn't go all over the place. Quickly dry. on just take the excess off with this and these are just made the sprays are just made with acrylic paint and um, I've used some distilled water so that it lasts a little bit longer Just dry that. See the colour as yet, so obviously I want it a little bit darker, so I'm going over with blue again, and I'm just going to pop on the red, which is probably a little bit too much. Look at that lovely colour. Oh. Um, <coughs> again this little mat is in a right old state now I think I've only used it a few times <laughs> I'm very good at cleaning up after myself
Right, now I'm going to use some walnut stain um, distressing ink and I'm actually just going to go over the top of it and just rub it gently and you can see, I'm not sure if you can see but it's just grabbing all the, the raised parts and if you want to fold on your creases here and rub it down there And I'm just going to heat that up again. Now this is where the um, the magic happens when you use the Mod Podge on here because these are all um, like water-based colours. They will mix. The distress ink will mix in with the all the um, acrylic paints that I've put on there. Okay, I'm just gonna put some Mod Podge on there and now you may want to give it a little bit, um, a little bit. You may want to give it, you know, two or three coats, but I'm only going to do the, the the one coat on here just now, and just make sure you get into all the little grooves. And obviously, you would do um, this side as well. But I'm just doing this because obviously I haven't got a lot of time to do all of that, and I'm just going to heat that up quickly. let this dry naturally if you wish so <clears throat> that is how it's come out and that was just using three colors and a distressing ink you can use any color you like um, just play around with your colors test it on some scrap piece of paper first and see how it comes out and like I said you would do this side as well but obviously I don't have a lot of time because I'm at nearly three and a half minutes now and I can only upload to 15 so there we go, easy peasy. So I will use this to make another little journal like like this one here. And as you can see, I mean the shading is slightly different, but you're not going to get you know two the same. You can add um, you know the distress stains if you like. You could use them. Um, this um, vintage photo would be nice to use on that. Um, <coughs> and just again, just let it dry. Um, or heat it up with your heat tool. So there we go. Like I said, any questions just ask. Thanks for watching. Bye.